this is going to be a quick video about correcting your speedometer in a Jeep YJ whether you change tire size, gear ratio, etc. This is really easy to do and I'm going to show you how. So I've got a couple different gears here that I've collected over the years and you'll notice that this one is longer. So these shorter ones are in use in 92 through 95 and in Jeep TJs also. These are for if you have an electronic speed sensor. These older ones are for 87 through 90 and we'll also throw 91 in there for cable driven speedometers. 91 is kind of a bastard year. It has the cable to go to the speedometer, but it also has the speed sensor to go to the computer. You can kind of see it right there. It's kind of a two in one jobby. It's a one year only part. So basically all you got to do after you figure out what tooth count you need is you pop that little it's a half inch or a 13, I'm not sure. You pop it off of there and pull the whole thing out and that gear lives in there. And now if you look on this ring, there's different ways you need to clock this based on the number of teeth. You can kind of see it shows you where to put it. But I'm gonna show you how to do it since I went to 513 gears and 37s. So I'll end up putting a chart up on the screen that gives you the different tooth counts for what you need based on your tire size and your gear ratio. Originally, I jumped up to 35s and 410 ratio, and that had me with that 33 tooth that you saw me just pull out. Well, now I jumped to 37s and 513 ratio. Well, 37s don't show up here, so it probably would have been a 39 tooth, but since they measure closer to 36, I just went ahead and went with a 40 tooth. But this will be helpful if you need to decide which tooth count that you need for your G based on your tires and your gear ratio. So one more cool tip about these, I'm be switching to this 40 tooth gear, but it was actually on this shaft. You can interchange these. So I was able to take this orange one off of here and swap it. And then I just put the other one back on here so that I have some extras if a friend needs one or whatever. So let's say you needed that 40 tooth gear and your buddy has one, but he's got the short shaft and you've got the long shaft. Hey, isn't that how it always works? Grab that from him and you can swap these out. It's real freaking easy to do. All you need to do is grab a flat punch that's small enough to fit down in there and hit the end of this and just set it in a vise like that. You gotta give it a little, little bit of whoop how, but not too much. And it's that easy. So that's what you're left with. And then to get it back in, I like to use a soft hammer for this part. Basically, you just bottom it out. You can feel it, like right there, it's bottomed out. And you're good to go, that ain't going nowhere. All right, so pretty much all you really need is like a half inch or a 13. Pull this out. And this is the little thing that it basically holds it in place so that you can clock it where it needs to be and then put it in the sluts. Very gently do this, because the first time I did this, I cracked the plastic right here and I had to buy a whole new sensor. There you go, it pulls out. There's the gear, there's a little O-ring on here. Obviously this is in a bath of transfer case fluid. When you go to put it back together, leave that up. All you gotta do is pull that out of there. So let's see, I was running a 34 tooth gear before. So now I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to re-clock this a little bit. Seems like 34 to 40 is kind of a huge jump, but this is definitely what the uh, what it called for. Sometimes I love Jeeps. You can like sit up underneath of them. Okay, so we got 26 through 31, 38, 32, 39 through 45. So it looks like I'm gonna actually have to loosen this up so that I can rotate this. Oh, hey, look at that, nice and easy. Okay, so I do believe that there's supposed to be a mark kind of like on your tail housing somewhere, but if not, what you want is to point it down toward the ground, like the six o'clock position. So mine prior to this was right here with the uh, 32 to 38 mark pointed straight down. That's that little mark there. And then these bigger marks are for this. And you can see that after you put that on there, it lines right back up with the bolt hole. So I have to clock mine to where the uh, 39 to 45 is pointing down. And hopefully when we push this in there, the, the gears will just mesh together. But if not, we may have to lift the rear of the Jeep up, get the tires off the ground so that we can turn things a little bit to uh, get the gear teeth to mesh. Or maybe we can even just pull this out and rotate it a little bit. We're about to find out. So basically all I gotta do is just get it just right to where it'll pop down in there the way it's supposed to. 
so let's just see if this will okay so there's what i did i got it in where it would fit but now my mark's off so now i'm gonna see if i can get it to turn while it's actually in there nope so let's see. You want to be real careful not to like pull on this too much i'm gonna end up breaking it again like the last one boy it seems like it really wants to go though i wonder if i give it a little tap a little persuasion if it'll find its way in there we go now let's see if we're lined up can't really see it from down here so we're just gonna Oh, look you there. So I don't recommend banging on that unless you know that the teeth are kind of started to mesh and it just needs that last little bit like you saw. But all you got to do is pop this back out and like turn the teeth a little bit and then try again or even rotate the whole housing till it starts to catch and then try to spin the whole thing before you get it down in there or whatever. Smart people grab a ratcheting wrench. I'm pretty sure you don't want to over crank this damn thing. It's fairly fragile. It's aluminum you're going into after all. Let's get it good and snug. Make sure that's snugged back on there before I'm done too. I got a built-in torque wrench right in my elbow. That's what I'm doing right now. Right there. All right, so we should be good to go. I'm gonna snug this little guy up and then we'll test it out. So like I said, if you're struggling to get that gear to go back in. Just jack the back of your Jeep up, obviously chalk the tires and follow all your safety protocols and whatnot. Then what you can do is just rotate the drive shaft a little bit and it should allow that thing to mesh right up. So I don't recommend trying to tap it in like I did unless you know what you're doing and you know for a fact that those gears were meshed up. I just didn't want to push too hard on my sensor and crack it. That's why I just grabbed the hammer and just tapped the last little bit. But just turn it back and forth a little bit. It should line right up. Okay, so I'm gonna try to take it up to like 50 and then compare it to a GPS speedometer app on my phone and see what happens, all right? I'm sorry if the sound is hard to hear, but it's a Jeep and it's windy, so. So it ended up being within like one mile an hour all the way up to 65 so we are good to go there if you have any questions about this if you're trying to do it if you need help if you get stuck drop it down in the comments below i do my best to try to answer any and all questions that come in i like helping people out i know a lot about these jeep yjs so if this video did help you out please consider subscribing to the channel or liking the video this is flawed off-road my name is dan and i'll see you next time